Hello everyone. Welcome back. Please comment, rate, subscribe, folks. Comment, rate, subscribe, like the videos. Also share the videos. I want to thank you folks for watching, liking, and sharing my videos. You people are the absolute best. Before we get into the video, yes, this is a hair bump on my chin. Um, I know you trolls are going to go at it, go at me in the comments. I already know it's coming and I'm prepared for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not tripping. I like jokes. Go ahead. Let them fly. Let them fly. Go ahead. Just let them fly. You know what I'm saying? I love the trolls. So, uh, you know, my Twitter is youngj000. That's three zeros. Go ahead. Let the jokes fly. You know, meme it up. You know, hit me some memes, some gifts as well. Go ahead. Do what you got to do. You know what I mean? I'm here for it. You know what I'm saying? I love to laugh. and I love the jokes. I know y'all going to come after me, but hey, I got to put my face on this camera, okay? Because I got to grind. And I got I to gotta, I gotta get into this jet talk. So now that that's done and said, okay, that's out the way. I already gave you trolls your time. I'll be going through your comments. Comment down below. I'll be seeing it. I'll go back and forth with you about it. All right. Now I want to get into some jet talk. I want to talk about this team. And I want to talk about a topic that was kind of swimming around in my head yesterday. And it was, what rookie has the most pressure this year to have an impact immediately? Um, kind of went back and forth with some people, and it was a lot of different, um, you know, uh, opinions, a lot of different discussions from a lot of people saying, hey, this is a guy that I think has some pressure. This is a guy that I think has a lot of pressure. And, you know, my text was kind of, you know, kind of straight down the line, to be absolutely honest with you. Uh, when I looked at the class, and I know that there's a lot of, again, a lot of different arguments to be had, but for me, um, my number one guy, that I think has to have an impact his rookie year is Makai Becton. Um, surprise, surprise. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's Makai Becton for me. Um, and the reason why I think he has to have the most impact in the rookie class is because there is no answer at left tackle if he doesn't work out. <laughs> That's the God's honest truth. There's no answer at left tackle at all. Um, George Fant is not, he's not a very good left tackle. Um, I, I, I'm worrying about him just playing right side if Makai does end up starting uh, at left tackle, which I think he should. Um, but I have, I have you know, uh, some, some concerns about him starting a, a right tackle if we end up starting him because I don't think he's a very good tackle, period. But if Becton does not work out and things just don't pan for him, we are going to be in a world of hurt. And it's because the kind of the, the domino effect of what happened if he's not able – to get himself settled and play solidly at this level. And the domino effect becomes Sam. Uh, that's going to be the first domino to fall. Uh, he's not going to be protected yet again for another year. He's going to take a bunch of shots. Um, he may regress his skill set. You know, they already talk about his feet work and stuff like that. It's pretty hard to have solid feet work in this league if you have people, you know, just screaming down on you every single week. If you're getting hit every single week, if you're running for your life, Every single week. Yes, your footwork is going to regress. Yes, your mechanics aren't necessarily going to be on point 100% of the time because you don't have time for that stuff. You know, so we could see the regression of that. Also, the regression of the offense could go with the two just as a whole uh, because the ball's not going to be able to get out of anywhere. But I also think a point that uh, people don't talk about is the regression, you know, of the running game and the impact on Le'Veon Bell, too. Our running game was not great last year. Um, but, man, if Makai Becton can't open up holes on that left side, if things just, again, if he just does not pan, whew, we're going to be in a world of hurt. <laughs> we really are going to be in a world of hurt. So I want you folks to comment down below. Uh, give me your top three guys. I want to get, get your top three guys that you think have to have an impact immediately in this rookie class. You know, have us get going and really give us a boost this year. So, Comment down below. Um, I'm going to go back and forth to you folks in the comments about that. But my second guy, um, you know, and I think it's kind of, for me, it's 1A, 1B. And here's why. My second guy is Mims. And I know people are going, well, Makai Becton's a left tackle. Like, we, yeah, I, I get that. And I understand that. That was my take as well. To me, it was kind of a no-brainer. Makai has to be a guy that pans. But for me, Mims is also a guy that I look at and I say, well, you look at our receiving core with like Rashad Perryman, Dotson, Braxton Berrios, you know, so on and so forth. Outside of all those guys, the only guy that you could look at is like decent, you know, that we could sort of rely on in a, in, in a sense as a wide receiver is Crowder. But Crowder is honestly a slot wide receiver. He's not a number one. He's not a number two. He is a slot 
wide receiver. So when you look at these other guys, again, Dotson, who's a first-round bust, Brashad Perryman, who's coming off of a, a decent couple of games last year, but, I mean, he's a first-round bust as well. And I'm saying to myself, Mims has been brought in. Um, Robbie Anderson departed. Uh, you know, loved Robbie when he was here. You know, valued everything he did for us. He went somewhere else, you know, got his money and got paid. I wish him absolutely nothing but the best. But that was the closest that we had to a number one. He's gone. And honestly, he wasn't a number one either. He was more of like a number two. He's gone and Mims is brought in. And Mims is brought into a situation where he kind of falls into where he's got to be a number one wide receiver. He's got to produce as a number one here. Because if he doesn't, then who will? Honestly, who will? Um, and we play a lot of great teams this year. And I'm looking at these these teams coming in with these defenses with really good corners, uh, really good secondaries as a whole, honestly. And guys are going to have to get open. And if they can't get open, if they can't beat some of these coverages, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. And so I'm looking at Mims, a guy that, again, we got in the, in the second round, which was a steal in my mind because I did not think he was going to be uh, where we drafted him. And I'm saying, you know, this kid, he's got to come in and give us some solid production. And that's when I, the wheels really started turning and saying, whoa, could the expectations for him be too high? You know, are, are we asking Mims to come in in his rookie year and give us, you know, 900 to 1,000 yards? Is that what you folks expect of him as well as a rookie? Um, I mean, <laughs> you bringing him in, you say he's got to be a number one and he's got to, you know, make these plays. I mean, I don't know if you can necessarily expect a rookie to give you that type of production his first year. Um, you know, on average, rookies don't really get a thousand yards their first year. So I'm just wondering, like, what kind of, you know, expectations do most people have on him? But I do know that he he has to have an impact, and it's got to be significant. It's got to be something, you know, where he's coming in, he's the guy that's getting open. You know, at some point in the season, maybe he turns into the focal point of the offense. You know, as far as the, you know, within the receiving core. Uh, so here's a guy that I really think that right behind Becton is a guy that hey, we've got to have some impact from him his rookie year. We've got to. We've really, really got to. And so, moving on from him. Uh, again, comment down below. And let me know what you folks think about that. What are your expectations on Mims? Uh, do you think he's a guy? Is where is he ranked on your list? Is he number two? Because to me, he's number two on my list. Um, so to move on from him. I want to go to my number three, and I know it just seems like I'm kind of going down, but for me, it's my number three is Ashton Davis. And and this is why. <laughs> this is why it's Ashton Davis for me. Um, one, we need secondary help really, really badly, particularly corner help, but Ashton can move around. But his impact as, you know, maybe in these three safety, um, you know, sets that Greg Williams is going to run could greatly, you know, help our, the, the weakness of our secondary. If he's a guy that can come in and play solid in coverage, and I know he's not necessarily a corner, but if he can play solid in coverage, that is going to be huge for us. It's going to be huge because we have so many question marks at corner. So if you can put, out, put him out there in a three safety package where he can come out and do a, a, a solid job in coverage, I'm not asking him to be a world beater. That's not, not Rookies you know, often struggle a little bit here and there, but if he can be solid in coverage, that's going to go a long way for us and it's going to go a long way for our secondary. Whoa, because, um, <laughs> again, we're still trying to figure things out. Uh, that number two corner spot, there's a hole there, and we're looking to see how that hole is going to be filled. So if Ashton can come in and be solid, hell, even if they put him in corner at times where he can, you know, do some things over there and hold his own, I think that goes a, a, a long ways for our secondary. But there's also kind of a, a little caveat to that, too, because I know there's a lot of people that are not talking about this, but... You got Adams looking for a contract. You also got May looking for a contract as well. And this could be pivotal for our future. If Ashton Davis does pan and he comes in and he gives us really good production and we were like, okay, this is a kid that we can move forward with. That allows you to, you know, say, okay, well, if I want to move on from Adams because he's asking for too much, I got Ashton Davis. He's a guy that can come in, be solid. It's, we're not going to fall off of a cliff as far as not have a safety you know, okay, we can keep this kid, we can move on from Adams. There's also another way you can go as well, which again, Ashton Davis does play a lot of cover safety stuff like that. You can look at May and say, look, we love you. You're a great player. You're a great safety. You're a great cover safety. 
Um, but we're giving Adams all this cash. I don't know if we can afford you to, player. <laughs> you know, I don't know if we can afford you to. We don't want to, you know, put that much money into the safety position. I don't know about this one, player. I don't know about this one. You know what I'm saying? We might have to move on from you and, you know, allow Ashton Davis to kind of fill your role. And we'll take that money and go elsewhere, whether it be pass rusher, whether it be continuing to bolster the offense, whatever it is. Maybe that keeps you out of, you know, implementing so much money into that safety position on your team. So I want you folks to comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. What did you think about my top three, uh, you know, rookies that I think should come in and we're, we're going to be asking to have a, a lot of impact their rookie year or there's going to be a lot of pressure on them to have impact their rookie year. Who are your top three? Um, you know, are, do you think the expectations are too high for some of these rookies as well? Uh, what do you actually expect out of them? Um, you know, so comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. You folks have a good one. Peace.